Welcome to Extra Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And I have been living with the Alfa Romeo Tonale, which means in Extra Throttle House world, I've been responsible for remembering all the facts and figures and numbers and stuff, which, if you know me at all, is a problem. So I think James has memorized them as backup anyway. No, I haven't. Oh, no. I can't wait for this. Oh, dear. So this is the toenail. This is the toenail. But in Pehev format. In Pehev format, which is the plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Right. Which it is. So how much does that make this in the end? I got this one. Starts at a, about 60 something Canadian. With a few ad additions, you're at about 70 Canadian. That's quite a lot. Yeah, it's quite a lot of money. Isn't this just a Dodge Hornet? Yep. <laughs> okay. In conclusion, you should not, no. So this is a, a, a version of the Dodge Hornet that they're trying to sell as the more upmarket premium thingy. Right, but you could right? also get a Dodge Hornet in plug-in hybrid as well. Yes, but it's, it's a, depending on what market you're in, it gets a little bit messy, right? Okay. We can get this car in a, the non-plug-in hybrid format here, but the States can't. Right. But this is the plug-in. That means that there is a 1.3 liter four-cylinder engine in the front and in the back, there's an electric motor and a battery pack. 50 kilometers of range, EV only, which is pretty good. Not bad. I'm doing pretty well so far. I'm yeah, yeah. Well, what's, the, what's the name of this lovely green color? Because <laughs> it doesn't, yeah, look quite, I knew there it was doesn't quite look like Montreal green. What is it? Do you know? <laughs> no, yeah, it's Verde, Verde Fangio. And it's... Uh, oh, Fangio, after the race car driver. Yeah, and it's cool. uh, a $2,000 option, actually. Which is yeah. quite an expensive option for a... Yeah, but you know what? They, this, they're, they're selling this as being all about style. We'll throw up some of the things from the press release in here. You'll laugh at the, some of the things that they said. It's supposed to be <clears throat> sensual. Right. Yeah. We're making love to cars in Italy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And look, it's, it's good looking. It makes me wish that they were still doing something like a Brera or even the smaller Mito. I don't yeah. know. We never got that here. No, we never got those. But the, yeah, like this sort of design and art style, smaller. 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 Yeah. No, no, no. I, listen, I think it's a good looking car. I think it's good looking from the front. I think it's good looking from the back. I love the. I love the heart-shaped grill, obviously, and uh, you have something. I'm waiting for you to point it out, this, this license plate holder. I didn't want to do it, but now I will. It's kind of dumb. That's a ridiculous holder. I think that's just specific to the, I want to hope it's specific to the press car. Well, also, it's specific to where we live because you have to have a front plate. Oh, true. Right? Yeah, you so. can't buy this. If this is the only holder you can get for this car, you can't buy this car in Ontario. You're not allowed. <laughs> that is half a mailbox right there. <laughs> it's very dumb. It, it, it's actually a recycling thing. Yeah. Off, off the smashed baseball batted mailboxes, they've been making. Are you done? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, the, the issue that I have with this is that not, it, not that it's not good looking or bad looking, whatever. It's just that it's just dumb as a concept. This right? class of car? This class of car is I stupid. find it strange as well. Right? It's like there's not much space inside. These windows are really narrow. You get a little bit of extra height. The whole thing is objectively worse to drive than a hatchback or a wagon. Yeah. Right? But, but, you, but it's for people that like to be high up when they drive. Can we bring up again the price? I feel like it bears discussion and repeating. 70,000. 70,000. But it says Veloce on the side. What? Oh, well, what well that there mean? we go. What it's, does that mean? I don't know. Speed, I think. Right, but what does that mean for the car? Is this a specific trim? I think that that's the top trim. Yeah. Right. I right. probably should have known that before we started. How's the, this, uh, how's the trunk space here? It's all right. It's actually, you know, good oh, for its, its class. Oh, electric trunk. I think. Fancy electric. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, that's fine. Yep. Oh, that's not bad. It's a bit narrow. And if you lift this up, there's actually a little bit more storage space down there for all your charging accoutrement. Um, and obviously this is the charging port for the EV bit, right? Nice. And the back seats? You said it's smaller in here. Careful, this little thing here. This is for style and removing your two front teeth if you're not paying attention. All right, I got two inches in my knees and headroom. Yeah, no, it's not bad. You can fit an adult. It's actually not. Not uncomfortable. This is optioned with like a $1,500 sunroof thing, which I don't think that I would get because it's one of those that's behind your head. Right. So as a driver, it's pointless. Yeah. And it just makes the headroom lower, which cool. is already quite small on the inside. Cool wheels. Yeah, classic Alfa Romeo wheels. Some people don't like these. People are split on them. I like them. I think they're cool, and I think that they're quintessentially Alfa Romeo. Yeah. Right? You know it's an Alfa when you see those wheels. All right. Why don't I take you for a little spin? Okay. Yeah, all right. Let's, let's do it. Um, yeah. Okay. You have, this is a challenge, you have two minutes to try and understand how all the systems work in this car and how they work together and how to change them and what the changes do. Okay. Go. Uh, the, so... So what mode are you in right now? This has got the DNA switch, by the way, right, because right. I'm we're in, I'm in, in upper trim. I'm in N. N, yeah, I don't know what that means, but good. Not neutral, I can tell you that. Yeah. Oh, I can hear the... Yeah, you I can hear, hear the electricity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so how, how much horsepower has this got? 
It has 285 horsepower. Nice. I remembered. Nice. That was deep, deep back in the in the alcoves. <laughs> it was way back there. It took me a minute. Yeah, I did it one number at a time. I used my mind palace, and I had associations <laughs> for each number. Um, and 347 pound-feet of torque. That might not be right. Right, right. But quite a lot of torque. Anyway, yeah. I'll, listen, I'll save you the, the, the stress of trying to understand how all of this works. But okay. obviously, this is a plug-in hybrid. So if you want, you can run in completely EV-only mode. Right now, we've got 24 kilometers of EV range because I've had the e-save button on, which makes sure that it charges the battery as much as it possibly can. Right, Whenever okay. possible. Because I, I didn't have a spot to plug it in at home. So I'll turn that off right now. So it will automatically go into EV mode when it wants to. But as you can feel, it's quite quick. It's five, quite quick. Five and a half seconds, zero to 60. Yeah. Not bad. And the torque fill is great. So if you accelerate in between the shifts, you'll feel a constant surge of EV. I see, so really, it's just smooth. Really smooth, very nice powertrain. However, I'm gonna click this over into A mode now. So let's so put it into EV only mode, or it should do. Oh yeah. It's and losing the rear end. Oh no, the engine kicked in, you were too aggressive. Oh, okay. So just try and go a little bit easier. You're gonna drive in EV only mode for a second Okay, now. we're gonna go calm. Calm, 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 calm. Tonale. Yes. It means whisper. Okay, so we're now in EV. Okay. Yeah. Decent torque, yeah. but then this is it. This is as fast as you can accelerate. And then the engine kicks in. The engine will kick in if you try to accelerate too aggressively and it will warn you. That's quick enough it's for around fine. town. Yes, it's fine. Lots of creaks going on in the interior. Oh, yeah, it's because it's a Stellantis product. Right. Yeah. Well, then that's not to say that Alfa Romeos were like always amazingly well made, but. Oh, advanced efficiency mode unavailable. High acceleration requested. I did request high acceleration. You requested it, yes. I did, the highest. Um, anyway, we can click this over into dynamic mode. Okay. Oh, it's and all gone red. It's all gone red. And now it's a little bit punchier, a little bit sharper. They've, right? done, they've done the short steering ratio thing. Yes, yes. And we've got these absolutely gigantic what, Julia Quadrifoglio Quite a paddle shifters. Yep. But I can't really experience the transmission here. No. Here, I'll put it in manual mode for you. I feel like nothing's nothing's happened. Very, very little. <laughs> this is the least yeah. I can smack these. There's no change yeah, in the way this, this is driving. Since this has the 1.3 liter, it only has a six speed transmission. They are such satisfying shifters, though. Yeah, the click is nice, but the shift is not. Right. Yeah. No, you're not going to get, not going to get like Ferrari level drops no. on those shifts. It's just not a thing you're going to get. I do, I, yeah. There's something. Alpha about the way it drives, though. It is, it's sort of. It's kind of like sharp and peppy and like kind of excited. Like, oh, yeah, like, you know, you know I mean? the disclaimer here is we liked our time with the Hornet. I know it's been, yeah. everyone wanted to hate on that car. It was 20 grand cheaper. Than the, yeah, the boring news is it's just fine. Yeah, yeah. It was just a talky four cylinder. That's it. And now this is a talkier still. I don't know if I'm feeling, apart from the, the, the EV only drive, I don't know if I'm feeling oomph that would make me splash out another 20 grand. No, but what you are getting is, and let, let's, we're gonna pivot the conversation now into a little bit more of like a discussion, I think, about what this is, which yeah. is to say a plug-in hybrid. Yes. You have to pay out the butthole yes. for plug-in hybrids right now. You do, you do. It is, they're ridiculously expensive. And, but where do you recoup that money? In, in, in the gas savings? No, not if, really. If you're talking about 10,000 plus dollars more for the, for the per hev. Yeah. Also, this interior is a bit meh. It's stylish, it looks cool, but it's just the materials are very, like this is a rough stitch on yeah. that. And There's like a softness to the door. Yeah, no, I know. It's listen. It's not amazing. It's not bad. But I think the mistake is them trying to sell this as a premium competitor. Yes. It shouldn't have gone up against things like the Lexus NX. It shouldn't have gone up against the what's the Audi and the X1 or it's whatever. X1 and the yeah. Like, it, it, it doesn't match those in terms of also refinement in the ride. Yes. Right. It's a bit hollow and economy car feeling. It, yeah, which is fine if you're driving in an economy car. Yes. But well, this is a $70,000 car in Canada. And the visibility is not perfect out front. I'm seeing a lot, no. of, a lot of dash, a lot of hood, and, a, and quite a small windscreen. Yeah, so basically what I'm saying is that right now, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles are very expensive. That yeah. said, 
I still think that this is the answer over a pure EV right now, at least where we live. But what about just a hybrid? Just, sure, just yeah, the, yeah. the HEV. No, but, but, I, but I really like the idea of, here's an example. I got a friend, his name is Dan. He has a RAV4 Prime. Hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. He has a RAV4 Prime. Right. And he drives about a 45 minute drive every day on EV only. Okay. Toyota told him he has to run through about a tank of gas or thereabouts a month to make sure the engine is healthy. Scary, so, okay. But just because he, sh he shouldn't just let the engine never ever run, right? I see, okay. So, but most of the time he gets to and from work every day, EV only. Plugs it in at home. That no, this, makes this, this, so much sense. But then he is an ice climber. So in the winter, he drives extended dif distances way up north. And it just starts the petrol. And he's got the petrol in. Oh, I like it. I lived with, the, I lived with the mini Clubman Countryman plug-in. <laughs> I can't remember. Those thingies, yeah. It was a Cooper S C C Clubman, I think, or yeah. something. Yeah. But it was very expensive. Sounds forgettable, but... It was forgettable. Yeah. It was forgettable. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind what's going on here. I, I kind of like the gauge cluster here. Yep. Uh, some of the items are a bit small at first glance. I, I love the branding that they've done with the charger as the snake's head. It's kind of fun, isn't That's it? That's fun. It's a bit blasphemous, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, listen, I, I don't have any issues with a lot of like the styling and the branding, and I don't think that they should have leaned so hard, as I said, on luxury. They should have made it more fun, more affordable, yeah. more all of those things, it's not right? not a great ride, is it? No, it's not. It's very economy car ride. You get jostled. Well, you, we are in the stiffest suspension oh, setting right okay. now. Okay, so go we'll back go, to N. We'll go back to N. There we go. See, it looks good in that picture, but I actually think the Hornet that we drove looks better than this. I don't think so. I, I like the look of this better than the Hornet, personally. They well, both look good. Canada locks out, because I don't I don't know if I'd spring for the Behev version of this. If Unless I was your mate Dan, who apparently is a super cool dude who just goes ice climbing, <laughs> I would uh, I'd just stick to the four-cylinder. Uh, yeah. Really What's it doing really, right really now? hanging on to that gear. Why is it doing that? that <laughs> Why is it hanging on? Go Let's away. give it reason to go then, shall we? There we go. I don't, and it's got the gauge cluster that goes the opposite direction, like a yeah. Genesis or a BMW. No, no, no. This is don't like in, that. In many ways, this is a bit of a mess. This car. Yeah. Right. I like it for some reasons. I think that it's overpriced, and I think that some of this is too complicated. By the way, trying to understand all of these different systems and how they interact is very weird. Like, there's the e-hybrid mode here, so I can like select. Uh, where is it? Down here? No, not schedules. Power flow. Like all of this is is. E save. So if I click E save, this is laggy as hell. I can basically ask what I want it to do. Do I want it to charge the battery, save the battery, and the target charge level oh, I, I want see. it to get to? Yeah, that's kind of nice. No, it's cool, but the, but there is a lot, a lot going on, and I don't I, I don't find it very predictable when the engine kicks in. But as a concept, what's that indicator sound? Really echoey. Italy, Italy, Italy. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's all styled. It's all styled. This is so style. More than substance, I think. It's pretty quick, though. It's quick. I like that it's got tech. I like that the, there's a 360 camera, and I think they can't. I mean, they can't afford to deny you anything at that price. No, yeah, it has to have everything for that for that amount of money. But yeah, I don't know. I, I just I want I want plug-in hybrid electric vehicles to be more common and more affordable. Because I think that that makes the most sense in the interim. Until we've figured out charging infrastructure and all that stuff, and until we've figured out how to make battery packs not blow up if you flick them, then yeah. this is what we need. A smaller battery, a little uh, gasoline engine, just to kind of you know, give it that extra reliability for everyday usability, and then just... You still get the great fuel economy. When and it does make that start-stop very nice there. Exactly. Yeah. I will say, if you don't pay attention, this did happen to me, you will run out of EV range only, and then you were driving a very large 1.3 liter four-cylinder front-wheel drive. It talks to it just then. Yeah. <laughs> that's not ideal. But that's you. It's your own fault. I wasn't paying attention. I didn't understand the e-save button yet, right? But now that I've got it figured out, on the way here, I added like, like this was a 30, 40 minute drive to get here this morning, and I added a about 10 kilometers of EV range, just by driving it. Okay, not bad, yeah. Yeah, I'm just, it's just fine. It's just fine, yeah, just it's just fine. too much money. Too much money? Yeah. I don't know if this is, this is where I'd put my money. No. Well, on that note,